In today's video, I've got the five least regretted college majors where when you get that sweet piece of paper that's also very expensive, you're not going to regret it. And starting off with number five, this is the one that I actually got. I got a doctorate in it, and that is a health-related degree. So the way they did the survey is they asked people if they would get the same degree again, and health came in at 67% of people saying yes. So this is actually what I majored in. I got a doctorate in pharmacy, and there are some things I regret about the way I did it, but overall, I was relatively happy with my choice. Now these days, I think there would be better choices. But back in 2012, when I was choosing my degree, that was actually a really good one. So I would probably be the 67% that would choose the same major again, right? So I came from a pretty poor background where when I chose my college degree, I had to be very practical about it. Because not only was I taking care of myself, but I was also taking care of my dad, right? I wasn't some trust fund baby or some privileged upper class person. And looking back, one of the main things that motivated my choice was was the fear of being poor again. I really did not want to be poor, right? So I was 16, I was trying to figure out what my career choice was gonna be. And my girlfriend at the time's mom, Ollie, told me to basically write down a bunch of careers that I could see myself doing. And then she had me research all of them thoroughly. And I realized after researching all of them and kind of figuring out what I wanted to do, that a bunch of them were healthcare related. So because of the fact that I did all the hard work at the beginning, I thoroughly researched it. I ended up making a choice at 16 or 17 at what my career was gonna be. And I didn't change my major a single time. So I went to the University of Kansas, Rock Chalk, and I basically did the accelerated pre-pharmacy track for about three years. Then I went to Roseman University of Health Sciences because they also had an accelerated program and it was about two years and eight months or so. And so I was able to get a doctorate in about five years and eight months. Now, as fortune would have it, once I became a pharmacist, I got a job that was super chill. I had a bunch of free time. I also had a bunch of disposable income and I started doing a bunch of side hustles and businesses. Most of them I either failed at or I didn't do very well in them, or I just didn't want to pursue them. But one of them I kept coming back to over and over again was YouTube. And of course, I was able to start a successful businesses and a YouTube channel. And last year, I actually quit my pharmacy job and went full time in business. Now, you might think I wasted my time getting a doctorate and becoming a pharmacist, but that is not the way I think about it at all. Because you have to consider that, first of all, it's always a great fallback plan for me. If for whatever reason, business doesn't work out, I can always go back to that career. And second, it was a really low risk way for me to pretty much ensure myself a really good income and a pretty good life as well. And then third, I was able to leverage my career, the fact that it was relatively easy, meaning that I had a lot of free time with it. And then also the fact that I made really good money, about $10,000 a month, I was able to use that money to start side hustles and start a successful business eventually. And you can think of a career almost like a boat that you don't own, but it keeps you safe in the ocean. And then you use that boat in order to build your own boat on the side, right? If you're just floating in the ocean on your own, chances are you're not going to be able to build your own boat. I mean, you could get lucky and do it, but chances are it's not going to work out. So yeah, health has been great to me. Uh, it was exactly what I needed at the time. I do think the healthcare system in the US has a ton of issues. And especially during the whole <clears throat> situation, it got really crazy. But with that being said, overall, it was a good choice. There's definitely more pros than there are cons. Next one on the list is very similar to health. It's a specific type of health. And that is going to be a nursing degree at about 69% of people saying that they would get the same degree again. So I had a friend back in Washington who was a photographer and their significant other was actually a travel nurse. And this person was kind of gone like most of the year. And the crazy thing is, is this travel nurse was actually making about $500,000 a year. Now this isn't typical of course, but the fact that there's a massive shortage in nurses, especially ones in certain specialties. And that basically means that you could make incredibly good money, especially if you choose the right specialization. And I think more than money, healthcare jobs in general give you a deeper sense of meaning because you are truly and directly helping people, right? Somebody comes in, they're having a lot of issues with their health, you help them. In some cases, you are going to be saving their life. And then you get to see them walk out of the hospital and they're all good to go. That is extremely rewarding to be able to help people who are in one of the toughest situations of their entire life. But unfortunately, as a garbage man, you don't necessarily get to see the fruits of your labors, right? You know that you're keeping the streets clean and everything, but you don't necessarily get to see how you're directly helping people. Whereas in healthcare, you're directly helping people through a very tough situation that they're having and you're getting to see that in real time, right? And this is why you guys watch my channel because I tell you to go where the opportunity is, right? I help you choose a career where not only are you gonna get paid really well, but you're also gonna be happy with the career because it's gonna 
give you a sense of meaning, right? Most of the career advice out there is absolutely terrible because it just tells you to follow your passion. And in reality, by just simply blindly trying to follow your passion, you're gonna end up in a career that you absolutely hate. But if you follow the advice that I lay out on this channel, it's going to help you actually bring value to society and have a meaningful career that you can be proud of. And therefore, in the long run, you will be happier. Now, on top of all the other things I said, healthcare jobs are also relatively easy to get. You do have to get an education or a certification in some cases, but once you've got that, the healthcare jobs are relatively easy to get. And they're also extremely stable. And by stable, I mean, these are probably the most stable types of jobs that you could possibly get. I mean, think about it. If it was the end of the world, like an apocalyptic situation, there would still be doctors and nurses taking care of people, right? So if you're somebody who's really worried about stability, like I was, healthcare jobs are really good to look into. All right. So next one on the list is engineering at about 71% of people who would do the same exact degree again. And engineering is one that scores really high, pretty much no matter what number you're looking at, whether you're looking at the money, the demand, the unemployment rate, how regretted it is, the male to female ratio, etc. So I think one thing that's great about engineering is it's one of the purest forms of practical problem solving. So engineers use science and mathematics in such a way that it solves real world problems that people are having right now. So something like physics, for instance, is awesome. And I remember watching this documentary on Netflix about these physicists who are basically figuring out what happens inside of a black hole, basically just using data that's collected outside of the black hole. And they made this ridiculously complicated matrix model that had like a thousand different inputs and one output or something. It was absolutely ridiculous. It blew my mind. And I mean, these people are insanely big brain, don't get me wrong. But if they are able to figure out what happens inside of a black hole, that's awesome. But does it really solve any problems that we have right now on Earth? It might solve problems that we have 50 years from now, 100 years from now. But right now, it doesn't really solve any problems. You know, this is not something that's going to affect your day to day life in the near future. So 200 years from now, where we're able to use wormholes to like travel to other universes, that's awesome that scientists did that right now. But it's not necessarily useful on planet Earth right now. That's the only point that I'm trying to make. And engineering is not like that. Engineering typically is going to be extremely useful because it's used to solve practical problems that people are having right now. And engineers are kind of like the middlemen between scientists and technicians. And this is why engineering is so useful in the modern world and why it has such amazing stats when you look at the numbers. And Cal Newport talks about this in one of my favorite books, which is so good they can't ignore you. He talks about how learning something that is really useful or valuable to other people, basically solving other people's problems is one of the best ways to basically find a fulfilling career that in the long run makes you happy. Yeah, so it's a great book, great advice, highly recommend reading it. And by the way, if you're finding this video to be valuable, definitely make sure to share it with your friends or family that need some career or education advice. I have a weirdly large amount of people who end up sharing my videos. That's how a lot of people actually find my videos. I get comments about it all the time. And I think it's really cool that this channel is kind of growing in sort of a grassroots type way. All right, number two on the list actually shocked me. I couldn't believe this one was on there, but when I thought about it a little bit, it made sense. And that is criminology at about 72% of people saying they would take the same degree again. Now, I didn't show a lot of the numbers in this video. I just kind of talked about them, but this one actually doesn't have great numbers. So I think it's ranked 326 out of about 900 degrees on my college degree ranker. So 326 isn't great, but the truth is in many states, you actually don't need to get a criminology degree or in some cases, any bachelor degree at all to become a police officer. So this is something you definitely want to research because it's different depending on the state. It's different depending on the position that you're going for as well. But I can see why people are so passionate about this. First of all, one of the biggest niches on the internet is known as true crime. And that's basically where they go over like different, you know, murders and like serial killers and stuff like that. And I find myself watching these videos sometimes. They can be really addictive. And I kind of go down that rabbit hole sometimes. But the truth is, I think most of the people who go for a degree like this do not do their research. And I've interviewed a ton of people. I've talked one on one with people about like, why? Why is it that you don't thoroughly research these things? Why is it that you don't reach out to people and ask them, you know, hey, do I actually need to get this degree in order to get into this position? And I found I think the number one reason people don't do it is not because they don't want to, it's because they're too afraid to do it, right? They feel a lot of anxiety about choosing their career about the direction of their future. And sometimes I have to give them a little bit of tough love. I'm like, listen, stop being a coward, right? You need to actually 
research this stuff. This is incredibly important. This is one of the biggest decisions you are ever going to make. Don't just do what your parents told you or what your teachers told you or what society told you was a good career just because you saw it on TV all the time or something like that. Actually make sure you research this stuff because this is one of the biggest decisions you're ever going to make. And I understand doing research can give you some anxiety, but you need to feel the fear and do it anyways. Number one on the list is going to be computer and information sciences at about 72% of people who would have done the same exact degree again. So no surprise to see this one on there. Computer science comes in number one time and time again, pretty much no matter what list you're looking at. And this one also includes other technology related careers like information sciences. But Naval Ravikant was quoted as saying, coding is a superpower because you can speak the language of robots and command them to do whatever you like. And this is so true because coding is one of the few skills that gives you almost infinite leverage, right? There's only a few skills that do this, right? Marketing, content creation, entrepreneurship, leadership, and coding are the only ones that come to mind. And with these skills, one single person can literally impact millions of people. There's not that many skills out there where you can do that. So if you can learn to code well, you're pretty much set for life. Now there's one number you can look at where this one actually has bad stats, and that is dropout rate. It is one of the degrees where people drop out quite a bit. And you might be thinking, oh, it's because it's really difficult or like something like that. But actually one of the reasons why people drop out is because they end up getting jobs before they even graduate. And that is one of the things about these technology degrees is in many cases, you can actually get a job without getting the degree. Now that does not mean the degree is a scam. It doesn't mean it's not worth getting a degree, but it is one of those things where you need to take it on a case by case basis. Because for some people, it might be better to go to a boot camp or get a certification or self teach or a combination of these different things. Maybe even if you're in school getting a computer science degree, you should still go out there and try to get a job just to see if you can, because why not? So that's why this one is a bit controversial. And in the tech industry, people will like, argue with each other for hours on end about this, whether you should get a degree or you shouldn't get a degree. And the truth is it depends, right? It depends on the person. But one thing is for sure is learning the skill of coding is incredibly valuable and it is going to lead to really good outcomes, especially if you're able to land a software developer job. Click here right now to watch my video on the ultimate guide to choosing a college degree.